Do you want to absolutely crush all 50 waves of the new Horde Onslaught mode or honestly any activity in Destiny? I thought you might, which is why today I have a build for you that provides top tier damage with an infinite ammo weapon, absurd ad clear capabilities against even the tankiest of targets, and of course, a fashion setup that will have your friends, clannies, and all of LFG begging to get you in their fire team for their next onslaught run. The build begins with one of the new additions to the S tier meta category of Destiny, the Manticore Exotic SMG, which after the buffs it received recently is hitting like a truck full of Nokia cell phones. This weapon, acquired from the Witch Queen section of the Exotic Archive, has a boatload of cool tricks up its sleeve that effectively turn you into a a void version of Marvel's Iron Man. For starters, this weapon provides you with a buff meter called Anti-Grav Repulsors, which while your character is grounded, fills up by 1% for every hit you land on an enemy and 10% for every enemy that you kill with Manticore. Then, while airborne and dealing damage for at least 0.5 seconds, the Manticore will take you into hover mode for two seconds, where each hit will drain 1% of your anti-grav repulsors meter, but also add 0.3 seconds to your airborne duration up to a maximum cap of three seconds. Additionally, whilst in hover mode, enemy combatants will be less accurate at targeting and hitting you. But where the real magic of this weapon kicks in is with the fact that while airborne, the Manticore will receive a 10% damage increase every 0.6 seconds, capping out at a 100% damage increase, aka double damage, once airborne for a total of six seconds. If you ever want to exit hover mode, you can do so by either reactivating your jump and allowing yourself to fall, ceasing to land enemy hits, running out of the anti-grav repulsor buff, stowing the manticore weapon, or by activating the special reload of the weapon by holding your reload button. Now, if this weapon is sounding pretty good, then you might be surprised to know that it gets even more powerful with its catalyst, which both refills 12 ammo to the Manticore's magazine and provides the wearer with a void overshield every time you score an airborne kill or land five hits against any non-red bar target while in hover mode. That was a lot of information, so before we get to the next set of extremely important parts of the build, take a breather while I kindly ask for your consideration in liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you've learned something new so far. The next piece we need to talk about is our first aspect, Trapper's Ambush, which not only transforms your snare bomb melee ability into a smoke bomb, granting invisibility to yourself and all nearby allies, but also gives you access to the quick fall air move, which upon activation will send you diving to the ground to create a significantly larger smoke cloud on landing, damaging and weakening enemies, and giving both you and allies an even longer duration of invisibility. Quick side note here, yes, the ability is technically called quick fall in the game, but I'm like two years deep into a movement to recognize this ability for the name that it should be called Shadow Dive. This aspect, whether through Smoke Bomb or Shadow Dive, is going to be how we obtain our initial instance of invisibility, which will tee up the next component of the build, the Jerfalcon's Halberg Exotic Hunter chest piece. While wearing Jerfalcons, upon exiting invisibility, you receive volatile rounds on all void weapons for 10 seconds, allowing for massive burst and AOE damage to anything that you hit. And what's more is that any weapon that fires volatile rounds also intrinsically inherits anti-barrier capabilities, which is not only fantastic for busting barrier shields without the need for any seasonal artifact mods, but any shields for that matter as well, like phalanx shields, hydra barriers, 
and even vex hobgoblins in their immune healing form. Furthermore, this exotic armor piece provides the wearer a 35% damage buff for 6 seconds, as well as both the wearer and all nearby allies with a reserve overshield when finishing an enemy while invisible. While in possession of this reserve overshield buff, you gain 500% additional base class ability regeneration rates until class ability usage, at which point you'll receive a 40 HP overshield for 10 seconds. Now, if you have any familiarity with your Falcon's Halberg, then you already know that we are fitting aspect slot number two with its match made in heaven, Stylish Executioner, where upon killing any enemies affected by a void debuff, such as Weaken or Volatile, you receive invisibility and true sight for a base 8 and 4 seconds respectively. And because Archer Falcon's Halberg will always grant our void weapons volatile rounds to be able to apply the volatile debuff to all enemies, this aspect and our exotic armor piece synergize together to create a perpetual loop of killing volatile enemies to gain invisibility and exiting invisibility to regain volatile rounds. Something that is worth noting with this aspect, however, is that after exiting invisibility, you do receive the two stylish debuff for two seconds, preventing the reactivation of stylish executioner for that duration. Admittedly, in 99% of circumstances, this is not a problem, as you are simply mowing down every single enemy anyways. However, in situations where you are in dangerous positions or low on HP, it can be worthwhile to use this knowledge to space out your time between kills to maximize invisibility uptime and safety. Moving on with the build, we have our four fragments to enhance our Void Iron Man even further, beginning with the Echo of Undermining to give our grenades the ability to weaken enemies that they damage. Not only does this allow us to rip through foes even more quickly, but it also gives us another avenue to get our initial instance of invisibility for our Jerfalcon's Halberk and Stylish Executioner kill loop. Now is probably a good time to note that my two favorite grenades for this build are either the Scatter Grenade for a quick burst of damage on a short cooldown, or the Vortex Grenade for a longer lasting and magnetizing field for stronger area of effect control. Up next is the Echo of Starvation, which grants the Devour buff anytime you scavenge a Void Breach or an Orb of Power. This is not only incredibly useful for enhancing the survivability with this build, as every kill while in possession of the Devour Devour buff will restore 100 HP and increase the duration of the Devour buff itself, but is also fantastic for providing significantly more grenades to be used for overall damage and to weaken foes through the Echo of Undermining, as every single kill while in possession of the Devour buff also grants a slice of grenade energy depending on the tier of the enemy. This fragment, along with all of the instances of invisibility and void overshields provided by this build, all feel even better with our third fragment choice, the Echo of Persistence, which quite simply increases the duration of all void buffs, such as invisibility, overshield, and devour by approximately 50%. Additionally, this fragment also ups the duration increase of Devour when clocking kills while in possession of it. Finally, for Fragments, we round things out with the Echo of Reprisal for significantly increased super energy gains when defeating targets while near three or more targets, with more targets granting even more bonus super energy per kill. This Fragment plays exceptionally well with this build, considering that you are incentivized to be close to the fight to take advantage of your submachine gun's effective range. All of this bonus super energy will fund the most potent ad clear tool in the game, the Deadfall Tether Super Ability, a single void anchor that pulls in all enemies around it, increasing their damage taken by 30% and sharing 50% of all damage to other tethered enemies. This tethered anchor lasts for 12 seconds by default, but can be extended by 0.5 seconds 
per tether enemy killed up to a maximum of 25 seconds. But if you really want to take things to the next level, when it comes to your tether, consider having a pair of Orpheus Rig exotic boots hanging out in your inventory, which for those who don't know, refunds ability energy per enemy tethered up to a maximum of 50% of your total super energy. I say this because if you can pull it off right before you are getting ready to tether, you can either get to a safe location or briefly enter invisibility, hop into your inventory, remove your falcon's halberd, equip Orpheus rigs, launch your deadfall tether at whatever poor suckers pissed you off, and then swap right back over to your Jerfalcon's Halberg after you claim your free 50% super refund. Trust me when I say that the brand new Onslaught Horde mode is not going to like the fact that I just taught you that fun little trick. As far as weaponry goes, I really enjoyed running a Disorienting Grenades Breach Loaded Grenade Launcher in my Kinetic slot, along with Auto Loading Holster for bonus convenience points if you have one. While this build does provide a ton of survivability through reduced enemy accuracy while in Manticore hover mode, in conjunction with your invisibility, overshield, and devour buffs, having a way to flip the light switch on any non-boss or champion enemy can be extremely convenient, especially when there is boatloads of enemies coming your way and you just can't help but get close so you can get all of that bonus super energy on kills from the echo of reprisal. Down in the heavy slot, I loved rolling with a void rocket launcher, also with auto loading holster if possible. With this build, you spend a significant amount of time high up in the air, which makes it exceptionally easy to have the perfect angle to rip a bullseye of a rocket on large packs of adds or a tanky enemy trying to hide behind cover. And finally, for those that like the taste of everything so far, Far, except for the Manticore in Airborne Power Fantasy, you can optionally opt out of the Manticore in favor of a legendary ad clearing void weapon instead, such as Funnel Web, Age Old Bond, Unforgiven, or even the Returning Recluse, to be able to open up an exotic slot elsewhere so you can run stuff like Wither Horde up in the Kinetic slot or things like Tractor Cannon down in the Heavy slot. But no matter what you decide to rock with in the weapon department, you'll need a perfect armor mod setup to round things out, beginning on the helmet with a harmonic siphon mod to generate orbs of power on void weapon multi-kills, perfect for your manticore or legendary void weapon killing sprees. Down on the gloves, I urge you towards a harmonic loader for significantly increased void weapon reload speeds, a fire power mod to generate an orb of power with your weakening scatter or vortex grenade, and impact induction to receive a chunk of grenade energy whenever inflicting powered melee damage. It's worth noting here as well that powered melee damage now includes the damage inflicted to enemies from the shadow dive air move that you'll be using to both weaken enemies and apply invisibility to yourself and allies. Heading down to to the boots, I've got you set up with two Void Weapon Surge mods for a 17% bonus to all Void Weapon damage when in possession of Armor Charge stacks, something that stacks with both the damage bonuses available through the Manticore Exotic perk and the exotic effects of Jerfalcon's Halberk's Invisible Finisher benefits. Finally, on the class item, you'll be best suited with a copy of Reaper to create an Orb of Power when landing a weapon final blow after activating your class ability, a copy of Bomber to restore a chunk of grenade energy with that same class ability activation, and a copy of Time Dilation to increase the duration of all of your armor charge stacks from 10 to 15 seconds. With the remaining open armor mod slots, it is up to you to fill those out as you see fit depending on what activity you are venturing on into. However, in my personal opinion, Opinion, you can never go wrong with a base setup of heavy ammo finder and scout on the helmet, resistance mods on the chest, and harmonic scavenger on the boots. As far as stat prioritizations go, you'll want to focus on maxing out your resilience first for a flat 30% damage resistance in all situations. In second place, I'd urge you towards discipline for more grenade up
uptime to make the most use out of the echo of undermining and subsequently your stylish executioner aspect, as well as your firepower mod to generate orbs of power on grenade final blows. Taking the bronze medal is intellect to increase the volume of deadfall tethers that you can dish out on a regular basis to make ad clearing an absolute breeze. And if you have any stats left over to distribute at this point, mobility is a good fourth option for increased gambler's dodge uptime to not only allow for more frequent procs of reaper and bomber, but to also enable you to always have your smoke grenade available to begin invisibility for your Jerfalcon's Halberg and stylish executioner loop. All that's left to do is to scroll down to the description for the Destiny Item Manager link that will automatically copy all of this over to your guardian in just one click. If you want to thank me for this build, hitting those like and subscribe buttons does just that. But please allow me to thank you for watching my videos, as I have just taken up content creation as my full-time career job and wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for your support. If you have an extra minute in your day, I would love to have you stop by my live stream at twitch.tv slash so I can say hi to you and thank you personally for watching my videos and supporting my content. Hope to see you in there. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.